Today is Monday, February 21st, and the weather is going to rain, right? Is that what they said? Um, okay, so we're just going to talk about building simple shapes uh, using geometric constructions. Uh, so we're going to do a triangle, or square, a pentagon, an hexagon, a simple division and equal parts, and an heptagon, which is seven sides. And that could be any side, any number of sides, really, with the same construction. Um, the, very, the very first construction, though, that we're going to do is how to do a perpendicular line, okay? And I'm just going to trace this one, because this is very useful in a variety of situations. So if you have a line, let's say it's a horizontal. Okay, how do I draw a perfect perpendicular, okay, in a perfect cross? I mean, I can use my triangles and I can build it that way, but if you want to be pure, geometrically speaking, you can take any, num any, uh, any arc, and I'm just going to use the same spots that are drawn here. going to draw, I don't know if you can see it, let's see, yeah, you can see it, um, two arcs, uh, let's see, how did I, oh, first I have to pick my, my points, right, and in this case I'm not really caring where it's going, but let's just say it's there, so if I do the opposite, Sorry, I have to grab my original dimension, which is this one. Okay, that's it. So I get these two crossings, and that's going to be my perfect perpendicular. Okay, so that's really, really simple. And that's used when you're gonna when you're gonna draw your um, your square. So uh, of course, once again, if I measure this circle, it would be 360 degrees. So a quarter of that is 90, right? Draw a square just using the uh, straight edge and compass. We use pretty much the same procedure. Okay. So I start out with a given dimension in this case which is uh, this square, which is, I think, looks like maybe two inches. Yeah, two inches. Compass. So now what I do is I draw a circle. Pointing on one of the dimensions, and now my my measurements here are a little bit off, but I'm just tracing what I did already. Okay. So that brings this point over to the uh, left side, right there. So now I can draw two bigger circles from there, from the right corner. Describe two arcs. Like that. And where it crosses, that's my top spot. And now I already, already had the original 
left corner here, so I'm just going to connect it. And I know that's going to be square. Okay. Now to finish off, it's really simple because all I have to do with this circle meets this line. That's my third corner. And to find my last corner using the same dimension. Go like this. Bring it up. And the same thing from this corner. So where they meet here, that's my last corner, okay? And that's the square. Now the triangle, it's really the most basic shape. And all you need to do if you know the uh, beginning segment Okay, so I'm doing it really thick, of course, so you can see it, but in your drawing, um, what I recommend is draw, draw um, you know, light lines first, and then go back in, and when you're done, um, thicken the line with a, a more um, marked line. And you can leave the construction in these drawings, okay? Okay, so that square triangle. Uh, let's see what's the next one. Okay, the pentagon is a little more involved. And I have some instructions for that, uh, which look like this. Okay, so uh, you can follow this, but I'm just now going to draw it once more. And there's very various methods on how to draw a pentagon, and this one is given the base, okay? So there's other methods given the um, circle inscribed in it. Um, so we'll just, we'll just do step by step here, okay? So I'm just going to go through the steps and then once again, hopefully the video will be clear so that you can always refer to that. Uh, let's use a different color. I can't remember now. This is probably smaller than you need to do. Uh, so that's my beginning segment. And if I remember right, for this construction, we need the middle point too, which I'm simply going to measure now. Uh, that's uh, one and three quarters, so it's uh, okay. That's seven eighths. So the first thing we do is we just go use our sort of usual circles, uh, marking the edge of the pentagon, right? So I'm just going to do this twice. And I apologize for all the double lines, but so that's one. Now I do the opposite on the other side. The 
next thing I need to do, and now I could do a construction here to determine this vertical line uh, with a compass again. Uh, actually, why don't I do it so you can see how. So it's a little more elegant, actually, rather than. So to find that vertical, uh, I can go like this. Okay, so I've extended this circle to the to the bottom baseline here, and I found that point, and then from those two points, I've drawn two large arcs, and they give me this this vertical line here. And I could have, of course, done that line simply by, uh, you know, using two triangles like that, right? Okay. So now the next point that we found is this one. And from the middle to this line right there. Okay. That's what I'm looking for. So I take that point and I bring it down. This. Okay. So now I've found this spot. I should have rehearsed it before coming to class. Now I'm in pretty good shape. So now that I've found this part, I'm going to use that mark to make the top corner. Okay. And to do that, I point on my right corner. Hopefully, yeah, there we go. Okay. Now I just simply repeat with the same measurement on the other edge. Okay, on the other base corner, which is there. I do that. Okay, so that gives me this spot right here. And now the other two that I'm missing are pretty much given by what I already have, which is one is this line, which is my side of the pentagon, and where it meets the larger arc right there. I get that spot. And here, same thing. I already have it. Okay. Ooh, that was a marathon. Okay. So now we just connect our lines. kind of, <clears throat> excuse me, check this to see if it's right, is to turn your pentagon uh, several times to see that, like, if I turn it this way, um, now it's funny, it looks, it looks actually off, but so that this vertical meets the uh, middle top, the middle of the top edge, and I can kind of keep doing that and see if the two sides are symmetrical, right, this side and this side. Okay, looks pretty good. All right, so that's the Pentagon. Now the hexagon, it's really, really simple. And this is, I believe, given the circle. center. So you would 
position this in the middle of your uh, layout. Okay, so if you have your drawing, just you know, figure out what that is and just draw it. Um, and then with the same radius that you used to draw the circle, which I need to measure again, just this one. All you have to do is, well, depending on which orientation, but now we're going to do it with the vertex pointing down and up. I just draw two more circles like that. And one on the top. Okay. Like that. And where those two other circles meet my original circle, that's where I'm going to have my spots. So again, in theory, then you don't need, you know, you can actually connect this free, I mean, not freehand, but directly to the crossings without worrying about whether or not it's correct, because it will be correct. Ago. <clears throat> so jumping ahead a little bit, uh, this drawing just shows how in all those cubes that we've been drawing and actually in the ones that we're drawing with the, uh, with the cube project that's coming up, uh, the cube is inscribed in this hexagon. So that's why it's a, it's, it's a convenient way to draw uh, the cube in oblique view. Okay. Uh, in this PDF, you also find this it's a nice little proof about figuring out the uh, internal sum of a, of a polygon. In other words, in a triangle, it's just a little aside, you know, these are 180 degrees because each one of these is 60. In a square, it's, what, 360? Yeah, and so forth. So if you, if you have more edges, what, what's the internal sum of the angles? And this is a little proof that my father-in-law actually figured out. So I kept it because I thought it was pretty elegant. Um, okay, now this one you've already done last week. And I'm just kind of quickly going to repeat it. So let's assume you have a, an edge that you don't know that's hard to divide into, in this case, seven parts, because we're going to do an heptagon, right? Let's do that. OK. I'm almost done. The speaker is complaining. Um, so in order to do that construction, we need to divide our segment into seven parts. Um, and the original may be something funny, in this case, four inches. Okay. Now, one way to draw this line and measure off seven parts is like I did here, to uh, simply measure, in this case, three and a half. So if I start... I start here. Oops. Um, you measure these points and then you bring them down. I'm just going to show you another quick way, which is actually, I think, more precise. I'm going to do it on white. Um, and that is, if you take your compass, you can simply add or draw consecutive equal segments simply by using your compass. So if I draw my first one like that, and I just point there, and I just do a bunch of circles like this, that line, I'm, you know, it, it 
follows, right? Intuitively, you see that I'm doing all the same divisions. Um, so that's actually a little neater way. So let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, one more. Darken that a little bit. Okay, so let's mark off now these points. So that's one. Two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And now, again, using the two triangles, what you need to do is connect this very first, very last point to the last point here. Okay? That was the unknown uh, divisions. But now these, we know they're perfect. So just position your triangle so that, you're, that you have enough room so that when you get here to the end, you have enough your triangle to draw it. So you line it up. And I'm just going to draw it. I mean, technically, all you need is really to draw this little bit right here. But I'm just going to draw them all. Ah, these triangles are a little tiny. So this, I have to slide this way. This is true for any number of divisions, okay? All right, so that's good. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That would be my zero, okay? Uh, so that's a separate drawing. You have the instructions for this as well. Look like that. Um, so why don't I use that actually? And I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. <clears throat> Again, you won't see the zoom in the video because it's a separate, separate camera. This one is the most elaborate construction, so what I'll do is I'll just trace it, um, trace it freehand, but when you do it, you'll be using the compass, okay? Uh, actually, no, I'll just do it. All right, so once again, this is given, I believe, the circle. So if you have your original circle, or rather, position your original circle so that it's in the middle of your, uh, again, of your drawing, okay? Right there. And let's draw that. I forget now what size it is. Okay, the radius is two. here. I think they're the same in the instructions, so let's just call that A and B. Uh, the next step is to draw a big arc. And I just need, I need it once, I don't need it both ways. So with the diameter, okay, from A to B. Just a big arc like that. And let's just call this C and D. Okay, now that I've done that, what I need to do is split A and B into seven parts, okay? Okay. 
And to do that, I'm not going to construct it, but we're going to use that system. In other words, you would build maybe a line over on this side, over on this side, whichever way you want it. Uh, but we come up with this nice division of from there to there of seven parts. Okay. And that would be one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then the rule is that you simply connect the number two, okay? It's kind of like pretty cool because you could do this like 12 times and you end up with a, with a shape that has 12 sides. Um, but because I divide it into seven, it's going to give me an heptagon which has seven sides. So once you determine number two, you just connect this or you could connect C as well. Simply going like that, and when it meets my original circle, that's the first segment right there, okay? So in theory now, you have that, you can just move that around until you get to the end and you get a perfect division. Now, what will happen is that your, your compass might be slightly off, your measurement slightly off, so that when you get around, it might not be quite so perfect. So there's another way to do it, I'll show in a second, but let's just go by by that first. Okay, so you simply now bring this spot around. Just like that. Okay. Now your moment of truth comes at the bottom when you do your, your base because if you do it right, it will be equally split by your original vertical line. If it's off, it won't be symmetrical, and you can see I'm already going off here. So I'm going to fudge just for the purpose of this demo. Um, so once you have all these spots on the circle, all you have to do is connect them. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to quickly show another way to find these spots. And that is you connect from this D or C to the vertical and you alternate between the points. So you would take number two, number four, and then number six. And that would give you also the same spots. So if I go from D to four and I extend it, I would get this other spot. And if I go from D to six, get this other spot. And I would have to repeat on the other side from C over 2 to get that. And from C over 5, I mean, I'm sorry, over 4. Get this one. And then over 6. Okay, so I've just now made a big mess, but um, that's another way to check if it's correct. And that's the heptagon, and that's the end of this. Um, so I will help you, you know, build this up, particularly this last one, which is the more um, complicated. But make sure that they're all the same. I mean, you could simply just measure them once it's finished to see if, in fact, they're all the same. Okay. that in, in this PDF, you'll just find more constructions of the same. Yeah, just different colors. Okay, and these are once again are the dimensions, the final dimensions for, of each shape. So the triangle is five, the square is three inches to the side. The pentagon is two and a half. Uh, the hexagon is five inch diameter and the heptagon is four inch diameter. Okay. All right. That's that one.